What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. This video is the first in a series of sorting algorithms. In this series, we will be discussing several sorting techniques. The first algorithm of the series and the one we are going to tackle and implement in this video is bubble sort. Bubble sort compares adjacent elements of an array and swaps them if they are in the wrong order. This order is based on the way you choose to sort your list in an ascending or descending manner. Now, to make things clearer, let's take this array as an example and try to sort it in an ascending order using bubble sort. We just mentioned that this algorithm compares adjacent elements. So let's do the obvious and start comparing right from the beginning of the array or from the first two elements stored inside this array. In our case, the first element is bigger than the second one. And because we chose to sort in an ascending manner, this means that these two elements are in the wrong order. Hence, we have to swap them. Now, the second couple elements we have to compare are the ones stored at index 1 and 2. You see, we are just iterating over the array and comparing the current index we are standing at to the next one in the array. This time, we don't have to swap them as they are already sorted in ascending order. The next three elements left in the array are all smaller than the item at hand, which is 30. Therefore, while iterating over these three elements, all of them will have to be swapped with the element 30, one by one, which happens to be the maximum item present in our array. After this first iteration, the array you can see holds its largest element in the last available position. Or, in other terms, the largest element is now located at the very end of our array. If we do a second iteration by starting all the way from the beginning, after the iteration, the second largest element of the array will find itself sitting right next to 30. And by the way, that is why we call it bubble sort. Because when sorting in ascending order, larger elements bubble their way to the end of the array, and when sorting in descending order, smaller elements do. To complete our sorting for this example, all we have to do is one more iteration by starting all the way from the beginning until we reach the last element we sorted, which is 28 in our case. We could go ahead and iterate all the way till the end of the array, but it is useless because all the items that are after index 3 are sorted in an ascending manner, and we already know that they are because we made them that way. Now, after this brief introduction, let's try to implement the bubble sort algorithm together. Before starting with the sort method, I want to show you what the actual class looks like. This sorting algorithm may be used to sort strings as well as numbers or any other type of objects. Therefore, I went ahead and made this class generic. We also have to make sure that the generic parameter extends to the comparable interface as this interface will grant us access to the compareTo method, providing us with a way to compare the types we will be dealing with. Of course, we also have the constructor that takes in the array that needs sorting as a parameter and assigns the array variable inside our class to this array. Now on to our sort method. As we already discussed, in order to sort the array using bubble sort, the first step is starting right at the beginning and iterate over the items inside our array. In code, this is represented using a for loop ranging from index 0 till the length of the array. We wrote length minus 1 because indices start at 0, so if the array can hold 5 items, the maximum index will be 4 and not 5. Okay. Now while iterating, we mentioned that we have to compare every element stored inside the array to the one sitting next to it. The element we are sitting at, or our current element, is represented by index j in our case, and the one next to it by index j plus 1. And because we, luckily, implemented the comparable interface, we can compare these two elements using the compareTo method. Now let's take a minute and think. What will we be doing with the results of this compareTo statement? Well, if we are ordering our elements in ascending order, we should swap the elements in case the first one, or the element stored at index j, is bigger than the one stored at index j plus 1. However, in case we are ordering in descending order, we should swap these elements in case the element stored at position j is smaller than the one located at j plus 1. 
Let's consider we are sorting in ascending order, same as our previous example, and move on to the swapping logic. To swap two elements inside an array, you have to create a temporary variable to store one of them. In this example, we stored the element at index j inside a variable called temp. Then we overrode the value at position j with the one at position j plus 1. So now the j plus 1 element is present twice in the array. After that, we assign the value stored inside the temp variable, which is equal to the old j index element, to index j plus 1. And that's it. We swapped our items. Now you may have noticed that there is still something missing in our code. We only did one iteration. If you look closely, what we wrote will only take the largest element and place it at the end of the array or at the highest index. If you run this code block on our previous example, it will take number 30 and place it at the end of the array. It is the right thing to do, sure. But what about the other integers stored inside the array? How are we going to sort them? Well, at the beginning of the video, we did take the largest element and placed it at the end of the array. But after that, we returned to the beginning of the array and redid this whole logic. The logic you can see in front of you was repeated for every element inside our array. So how do we represent this in code? Yes, we need to wrap everything we just wrote with a for loop going from index 0 till the end of our array. Now this piece of code, as is, is a working solution for bubble sort. However, there is still something I mentioned while going through our example at the beginning that is still missing from this implementation. What I said was that we can go ahead and iterate all the way to the end of the array, but that it's useless because the elements bubbled at the end of the array are already sorted in an ascending manner, and we already know that they are because we made them that way. So, after the first iteration, we know that there is no need to traverse the last element anymore. And after the second iteration, there is no need to traverse the last two elements. After the third one, there is no need to traverse the last three elements, and so on. In other terms, we are removing the number of elements we previously traversed or sorted from the total number of elements we need to traverse or that are stored in our array. To reflect this behavior in code, we simply need to subtract the i variable from the length minus 1 in the inner for loop we have. Now, with this implementation, we don't have to iterate over the already sorted elements in the back of our list. That is a way better implementation of bubble sort. Want to make it even better? Well, let's think together. In our previous example, we did three iterations to sort our array. But here, if you run the same array we had on this piece of code, you will see that we need to do six iterations, because our array holds six elements, and because of the outer for loop that we have right here, and which goes all the way to length minus one. However, in practice, we tried to sort the array, and we know that no more than three iterations are required. After three iterations, the array will become sorted. The additional three iterations we are doing are just a waste of time and resources. How are we going to solve this issue? How are we going to tell this algorithm to stop after only three loops? Well, the thing is, we can't let it stop on three, but we can tell it to stop on four. Because what makes the fourth iteration so special is that it's the first iteration where no swapping is done at all. In code, we can do that by adding a boolean initially equal to false, and we only set it to true when the swapping operation is performed. After the inner for loop completes, we check if any swapping was performed, and if the answer is no or false, then we break out of the outer loop and end the sorting. This is what we call an optimized version of the bubble sort algorithm, and with it, we obtain the final and complete version of our sort method. Now, let's create a main method and see the sorting algorithm in action. In this method, I went ahead and created two arrays, one holding strings, as you can see, and another holding integers. I also went ahead and printed out the initial state of these arrays, 
how these numbers and strings are stored inside the arrays before we perform any kind of sorting. When the arrays are printed to the console after the sort method is called, using the bubble sort instances we created, you can see that both arrays are now sorted. The array storing integers is stored in ascending order, the smallest number being the first, and the array storing strings is stored alphabetically. So that's it for this video, I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys for watching, take care, and I will see you on the next one.